Hi everybody, it's Graham Cave, and it's another My Music. It's that time of Friday afternoon when you've just, you know, you've had lunch, you're thinking it's not, not long now to the end of the working week and you're thinking maybe I can just sneak and look at this on my PC before the boss notices and ca catch, a, catch something a bit more entertaining on the Friday afternoon. So in a minute, I'm going to be speaking to Tam or Tamlin um, I, I'll ask her Hello. which which name she wants to go by, actually, as well, um, about her life in music. Uh, in particular, I want to know what she's doing with one of these. But first, this. <laughs> I need to get going, Mel. See you later. Right then, challenger. Hi -ya. Ah, da -da, da -da. Da -da, da -da. First time ever yeah. that anyone's ever had a neck stand <laughs> fight on air. Because <laughs> you know you've got a neck stand. That's brilliant, isn't it? How do you know? <laughs> how do you know about neck stand? Um, Sam has been putting it in my face for a year. <laughs> <laughs> literally like that look at this yeah 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 because um, so i i knew sam for many years and then she started next stand and i haven't been using it and still started traveling and i realized how amazing it is to actually sit properly with the computer up ergonomically it's, correct it's so important otherwise we will all develop into this kind of other being with a with a hunch coming out of our back and and you know we'll end up like zombies like this yeah definitely um, i'm a gamer too so i'm totally going down that path. <laughs> really you're a gamer as well what kind of games do you play um a lot of rpg uh the latest one i just finished divinity original sin wow. it's a super long turn-based rpg <laughs> well, I'm going to have to get you over to our Discord channel, um, our Discord server to, you know, for, for chats and stuff, because obviously loads of gamers hang out there. Cool. You you on you on Discord at the moment? Um, I I have Discord, but I don't check it regularly. Yeah, you don't but, check it. Yeah, you see, like, like like loads of people don't don't check these things. Have all of these different platforms. You know, that's that's the way of the world these days. Um, let's talk let's talk music you've been sure. in music for the whole of your life it seems pretty much yeah so um my my mom has told me that i grew up just dancing and singing to disney music which i don't quite remember but she said that i would record myself on the those super old camcorder if anyone remembers that, <laughs> yeah, so of course we do. Yeah, yeah. yeah, with the actual singing. tape, the tapes, before, yeah, before the, the little digital. tape. Yeah, yep, yep. I am that Absolutely. old. <laughs> well, uh, do, do you know yeah. what? Some some of us are old enough that the tapes in video recorders were this big. Okay, so you're not that old. <laughs> <laughs> you're not that old. If they were little tapes, then you're not that old, right? So you're talking yeah, like super. Uh, I'm super in the eight, little tape like era. Yeah, super eight, that sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. So you used to you like always liked performing then as well, if you were making videos and stuff. And you're visual you're very visual as an artist anyway. So is yeah. is that kind of side always been there as well? That you know, you want to not just make sound but put put something visual to it as well. Mm. I, I think so, because um, I, I suppose I could say that I do every single thing related to art, because I was an illustrator, like in high school and university, I had a freelance side job as a, a character illustrator, and I did some album covers and book covers as well. Um, and then I studied animation, like three computer animation for two years, and had a job at a game studio doing animation and character design. 
Um, and I was into acting for a while. Um, I did musical theater. Uh, so I, I really enjoy like every aspect of art and I think they're all related. Like when I write music at the moment, I feel like the, the music is the background. Um, it's like the soundtrack for the lyrics and the, ly the lyrics is like poetry, right? And then the yeah. visuals am amplify the message of the lyrics and the music. So everything all work together. And like the whole is, um, what's that saying called that? The, the sum of the parts is greater. Sum of the parts, The yeah. whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Indeed. Yeah, so I feel like when everything wor work together, like all aspects, the sound, the visuals, the lyrics, um, then it amplifies what I'm trying to communicate so it much better. It gets the message over much more clearly. Um, Sam is actually watching. Hi, oh, Sam. Hi. <laughs> good to, good to see you. Do you see our next stand fight, Sam? Yeah, she probably did. She probably <laughs> did. She <laughs> probably get told off for that later, you know, because you're not, not meant to be fighting with these things. Um, and uh, we'll talk about we'll talk about Sam a bit later as well when we we come up to date with with your music because um, I know she's appeared maybe in in some of your videos, maybe may hidden away, but uh, she's ha she's uh, had some not, involvement not there. Yeah. Yeah, not quite <laughs> hidden. <laughs> so uh, I have two solo music videos so far um, that I directed and I recruited all of my friends to act in it for free food. <laughs> and Sam was one of them. <laughs> I, I would have been there for free food. Free food and drink, that's it. What what more do you want? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and the chance and the chance obviously to to hang out with you and, and be involved in the music video as well it's not something you get asked to do every day so disney disney was the starting point do you still mm -hmm. remember any of the disney songs by the oh way? yeah or definitely you, yeah you, you have a favorite disney <laughs> song look at this stuff isn't it neat wouldn't you think my collection's complete wouldn't you wow. think I'm a girl, a girl who has everything? Little Mermaid, for sure. <laughs> oh, now that is so good. That is so good. So what What after well, after Disney, what, what was the next thing for you? What was the big thing musically that then took you on on the start of your um, journey? So, well, I really appreciate my parents. Um, they got me into singing and piano lessons. So yeah. I was actually trained classically to sing like an opera soprano singer. <laughs> and then um, was when that I was hard in... work uh, or did you enjoy it? I don't quite remember. Oh, right. It could have been that painful. <laughs> I was then. like five. I started when I was around five. That's so it was so just young. like one of those activities like, oh, you go to, you just sing in class for a while is kind of fun and you don't really practice at home that much you didn't take yeah. it seriously <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. You, learn but how to, I... you, you learn how to breathe properly though doing that oh yeah that's, yeah definitely that's the main thing yeah so yeah, you, really, and, um, you really got into the technical side of singing yeah so that that part helped a lot with like singing and how to sing without ruining your voice Although I think I did ruin my voice for a while because I um, <laughs> later on in life, I joined a, a rock band. And um, in, <laughs> in, in one of the show that we, one of the event we performed at, there was this female, like a woman singer who was screaming, like legit screaming with a screamo voice. And I was like, that's so cool. How do you do that? So I was trying to practice like for quite a long time how to scream but i wasn't doing it properly <laughs> so i may have ruined my voice a little bit there uh but yeah i think techniques is quite important especially if you're s singing or like i suppose my song you need a stronger vocal because i sing very um heavy uh, as I, I guess fierce kind of song mm. that's more energetic yeah so you need you do need proper techniques well, the, the the two singing techniques are quite different, aren't they? I mean, operatic singing or 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 any kind of classical singing with very diaphragm based singing, mm. as opposed to a lot of rock based singing or you know uh, rock stroke pop based singing where it comes more from the throat. Yeah, yeah, and it's definitely. Getting, and it's getting it's getting the 
it's getting the mix between the two and protecting protecting the throat particularly in terms of uh singing with you know trying to trying to get a little bit of gravel in your voice or get a little mm -hmm. little bit of edge in your voice when you're singing yeah like a more belting kind of sound for yeah, rock vocal ex exactly so, yeah the the classical singers don't really encourage that <laughs> no but, yeah no you know and and if you yeah if you've got you know uh and, and if you're trying to you know control things like vibrato in your voice etc i mean with with classical trained uh vocalists it's it's much more controlled vibrato whereas with a anyone that sings <laughs> rock it's 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 far less controlled so i guess somewhere in that you know doing that work with uh the band was beyond apollo correct yes but, yeah, yeah. I, somewhere within that, did you did you strike a happy balance between the two in terms of techniques? Um, I I guess when I was doing rock music, I wasn't practicing any classical style of singing at all until no. um, a few years. I think it was after Beyond Apollo disbanded in 2015 actually I had an interest in classical singing again and I went back to a, a classical singing teacher to like get her to correct my classical techniques so it, right. it has been coming back a little bit but I would say right now I'm much better at the the belting rock <laughs> vocal <laughs> oh, yeah. but you, you know but but with elements of the classical in there which is you know mm, yeah which is yeah and, i still and, have the choir parts in the song uh, absolutely and in terms of instrumentation and how you write how how do you how do you go about writing your your, your music um so this time around i i want to write something around what i want my listeners to think about um, cause I think to give it a bit of a background and uh, a weird story is that I used to think that music or lyrics needs to be something emo, emo sorry, something emotional and personal. And I would say that, um, I've never really been an emotional person, but I've been like the, I guess, more logical, <laughs> someone that thinks a lot about philosophical questions and all those things yeah. and uh, yeah. when i started writing music myself i thought that i had to write something emotional because that's all i was exposed to like you didn't re really have youtube or spotify back then you only get the top 40s and everything was like about love or breakup and relationships and I then get it. i so wrote you thought a song. you had to be crying or you know upset yourself yeah. or yeah before it came yeah. out so i wrote a song about um an, an imaginary breakup, someone leaving me. And then I, I went to perform that. Uh, I had an opportunity to perform at a radio station. And I remember the radio host saying, oh, so that must be so personal for you, like personal experience. Can you tell us about it? And I was like, no, that, that wasn't about me. <laughs> and then the host was like, what? <laughs> so yeah, so I realized that, um, this time around, when I started writing solo music again um, last year, actually, I realized that I, why not just be myself if I'm not a super emotional person or wanting to write and not wanting to write about my relationships, then just don't do it. <laughs> but since I, I, like, I studied psychology, I read a lot of philosophy, I think that um, my mission in music is to get people to ask important questions yep. about their lives through music. So the lyrics is the front and center for me. The, each lyrics of the song is like a, an explore, exploration of different philosophy or questions that I want people to think about. Uh, for example, the first song that I just released today, actually, um, a few hours ago, uh, is about someone who would uh, want to win at all costs and losing their humanity at, in the process. So it's a question for my listeners to think about whether um, 
Are they are they living their lives that way? Are they um, sacrificing their humanity or their own well being to succeed at all costs? Um, so it's something like that. I would come up with a concept or something that I want my listeners to think about first. Then I would choose all the instruments or the the melody, the music, the background music behind it to amplify the message. So when I think of someone who wants to win at all costs, I would think of someone like really fierce and angry and um, kind of anxious and nervous. And I would think, okay, so what kind of instruments would communicate that sound? And um, in my head, it would be something like very angrily, sharply played strings. And it has to be something low strings like cello or bass. And that's what I use in the video, uh, uh, sorry, in this song as well as like war drums. I use taiko drums, like the big Japanese drums, because it's like going to war and like mm. uh, getting, like winning, getting to the top. So that's that's why I chose those instruments like to amplify the message in the lyrics uh, and the visuals, the video as well, like everything ties in together. Like when I, when I write something, um, both the lyrics and music and the visuals, comes together like comes to me comes out of me all at once and it's um, incredibly strong it's an incredibly strong image that you have i mean and the song uh to win will you give up which is mm. the one that we're talking about I, I i just put that in there just in case people want to go and check it out in a minute because of course they will um but uh actually in doing what you've done I think actually the emotion comes across even more. <laughs> so even even though actually you've stopped trying to write from an, a self emotional perspective, you know you're, you're not trying to think. Oh, I've got to get myself into this state of being upset, depressed. You know, I've got to get into a bad relationship, break up with somebody to in order to write the next thing that resonates with people actually i can just be the philosophical person you know trying to get people to think about this by actually taking that that slightly detached view um but channeling a voice because that's what you're doing in a way is you're channeling a voice of question in there yeah. you're 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 kind of play acting in a way there's a lot of acting in there i'd say yeah is that you actually you're actually creating a, a more emotional resonance which i think is really cool <laughs> you know yeah so I, do, I in a way, do you feel like a playwright do you feel as much of a playwright as a songwriter um i i suppose so but only for my music video like i'm horrible hmm. with spoken words like if i were if I had to act or write spoken words, then I yeah. I can't do it. <laughs> but when it comes to music and like the concept for the music, then yeah, because uh, in this video, I I was the director as well. Like I wrote all of the 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 scenes, like what the character should be wearing, what they should look like. Um, drew all the storyboards, and yeah. Um, basically, being the the OCD director <laughs> to yeah. get get the vision that I want. Out Did there. you enjoy and that role? Yeah, it, it was really. You're allowed to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I'll have to ask Sam. Yeah. I'll ask Sam when, when I next speak to her. You know what what, <laughs> what was what was Tamlin like? Was she a, you know a bit of a taskmaster on the day? Um, <laughs> But you know, it, it, you've obviously got a very clear vision about what you want to what you want to put out there, and 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 therefore it makes sense that you take control of that, etc. Mm -hmm. I mean, and how much does that echo your your life outside of music as well? Because I know you're you know a successful businesswoman as well. I mean, is is there similarities between the two? Yeah, I I suppose. Well, I did draw inspiration ish from my own life because um uh, I, I guess while i'm not the the type that would totally crush everyone and kill everyone in the way but uh, for for a while because uh, currently i run my own uh, tech company and previously i was a business development person for another consultancy and i would say during that job i was really obsessed with 
winning clients and getting clients winning big deals no matter what and saying whatever I had to say to close the deal. And I became miserable in the process. So that that did motivate me a little bit with that song. And like uh, when I was playing the characters in the video, I was remembering that feeling of wanting to win so much um, while playing the characters and amplifying that. So it came from mm. a, an example from my life and amplified it uh, through acting. Uh, and, and I just remember now that uh, when I was acting that role right because uh, that the person the, the character in the video is someone who's wanting to sw to win so much that like she would keep tensing up so I was tensing up myself to like appear angry to like uh tensing my jaw tensing my whole body throughout the whole shoot then <laughs> after the shoot ended my body was sore for two weeks <laughs> afterwards really wow <laughs> yeah and then let's, let's, talk the about the, let's talk about the, 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 the next song that's going to follow on from this. Mm. Um, I've had a video shot already, and, and thank you for letting me have a look at that. Um, Come on, Little Humans. Now, that's, a, that's an amazing song. Um, oh, thank you. It's a very uh, weird song, right? <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't like the word weird. I, I, like, I like the word, um, yeah, I like the word Graham. It's I, a very Graham I song. Think... <laughs> that's true. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just the kind of thing. Song. It's just the kind of theme that I would listen to. Uh, and, the, and the reason it's the kind of thing, because it, it doesn't sit into any, and I've said this to you off of here, it doesn't sit into any genre. In fact, it, it messes with messes with genres. It, it sort of flits between one genre and another with, within the, the song, if you like, or style within the song itself. Um, it's, in a way, it could almost be part of a, a big theater production as well it could be it could be it, it's as much as a pop song as it could be a, a you know a show song how why <laughs> talk to me about uh, yeah. it yeah i call it the whatever comes out of my head genre <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like it, it. it is whatever comes out of my head <laughs> so yeah. i i i don't know i don't know why uh i i suppose it's the same that uh the same kind of process as the other song that this is the message that i want to talk about so this this second song come on little human is about um how how society or schools or parents or like mindless tv shows can brainwash kids not to think for themselves and not ask important questions and just basically do whatever is told um and i felt like it has to be a, a little bit um uh, childish or, or kids ish sounding mm. um that's why i use a lot of bells and um kind of upbeat uh tube bar that so sounds uh kind of funny and circus ish and musical theater ish yeah um yeah but I also i use chords that sound a bit uncanny enough so it's not completely happy i'm gonna and, i'm gonna say yeah. now that i think um if if anybody's if anybody's watching this that's within my music channel, if 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 you want a reference point, because I you know it's str I'm struggling to think of a reference point, but if you wanted a reference point, um, there's elements of the visual that are a little bit like Pink Floyd's The Wall. Um, have you you seen Pink Floyd's The Wall? Yeah. With, yeah. I saw yeah. The, we don't the need music no education. Video. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I actually saw it after I made the video because I sent it to a friend, and then he said, "Oh, have you seen this video?" And I watched it, and I was like, <laughs> "Oh yeah, that's cool." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know the reference that I'm talking about there. Um, yeah, so there's, it there's was inspired by um, 1984, uh, the book mm. and the movie of that specific part, and the first part was inspired by Stafford Wives where like everything's perfect and people care yeah. about looks. So I'm they're going to have a load of people now go and check out this video when it have finally arrives, which is uh, how, how long's kind of a gap between the, the, the launch of the first one, which is out today and the next one. I, I, I haven't set a launch date yet, but I would say one month from now. 
so what people need to do is make sure they subscribe to your youtube channel and then it will happen when when it happens so 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 let's let's hope we get your your youtube channel subscriptions up after this but people think i've got to go and i've got to go and watch that video you see when that comes out so inspiration wise for you i mean have have there been along the road i mean you you, as i say you've been in a band which is was very um you know uh it it was a heavy band with you know with a a a guy that could sort of do the the rap type vocal and the screamo vocals as as well kind of everessence type you know uh feel to it etc and and now you're doing this this solo stuff which is kind of all over the place in terms of genres which is it's wonderful and you know and you're kind of up right up there with the very avant-garde I'd say uh artists that you know really really plow their own field and I you know I mentioned to you before people like Björk or Tori Amos or you know that kind of strong yeah. female singer that really has a clear idea of, of, of voice and then the the genre doesn't really matter it's it's all about getting that 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 message and that theatric out to to prove mm. uh, to get people thinking about something yeah although, who, although who, i hope i'm not in the avant-garde category because i uh i hope that people do listen and think about the lyrics that it's kind of get in their brain and not yeah. just like a, a super out there art form yeah so, some of it's out there but it's accessible. It's accessible. I, 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 I don't. I don't think uh, Björk or Tori Amos have done badly in terms of uh, accessibility or record sales. I mean, in terms of in terms of inspiration along the the, the lines, as you've been going on, who who have been inspirational to you in terms of music artists? Um, so I I can I have people that truly inspired me, but their music sound nothing like mine. That's so, great. Um, I think I I told you about Aurora. She's Mm. a Norwegian artist and her songs are so inspirational and they just like touch you in a, a, like a a human way. I don't really know how to describe it. You must have been so pleased when she did (laughs) Disney. Yeah, bringing that back full circle. I actually found her. I found her from Disney. From from Frozen. (laughs) from frozen yeah i was like right. who's this ha person and then i looked him ah. up and her songs were like <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um she she actually got me back into doing music after stopping for right. six years yeah, yeah it was her songs so she would be my main inspiration at the moment i know um, i made you jealous by telling you that i've been to see her live she is she is yeah, really quite know. special she's very very special as a person i think um and she she has this cookie way of looking at the world which is which is great but but yeah she she certainly de- makes people delve into a particular area of their personality i think through her songs and that mm-hmm. that's you know that's something beyond her years i'd say um yeah cuz she's really still quite young and i, I you know you you think she's an older soul i think in a younger body um so yeah she's she's an inspiration um who else anybody else um definitely evanescence i've been obsessed with them since um like elementary school and yeah. uh, strangely enough, even this new song to win, I so far I already got a few comments saying that it sounds like Evanescence, even though there's no rock instrumentation at all. And I think that's mm. a great compliment because I am obsessed with them. <laughs> Amy Lee's got a wonderful voice, so yeah. any 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 time that you get to, you know put in the same bracket as Amy Lee, yeah, um, yeah. I saw them live twice and. I was blown away every time. Yeah, and and what what about other types of artists? Are there any kind of visual artists that you particularly like, or or you know you've drawn inspiration from, or or, or film producers? Mm. Um, film producers, I I don't have anyone in particular. Although when I was directing or like designing the the set and the scenes for my music video i research a lot of films um 
like in the the second music video come on little human um i was watching her the movie mm. um the ones that has the ai that fell in love with a human and then they left so like a lot of the the style the colors inspiration came from that film um uh, rewatch 1984 <laughs> for reference and again yeah i don't know I, i i watch a lot of stuff a lot of movies and uh, series but i don't really have a specific you don't necessarily person. don't necessarily take it in the detail but you take the detail of the what you're watching on the screen in and that's that's the bit that you reference no that's yeah. that's really good so so what's what's next for you um you know obviously you you've launched the the one uh song today um and another another one in the bag is are you working up towards a whole album with with this as as a, a solo project yeah so for this first i guess is an ep because i have five songs planned um cool. the the concept of this ep is like alienation from your authentic self is a say a existentialism concept that like there's certain things in life that make you not be true to who you are whether it's by you lying to yourself or by what society teach you or external pressure or things like that um so the lyrics of this whole ep explore different way that people can uh, become alienated from who they truly are um so yeah i have other songs plans although i haven't started producing them yet um it's it's been hard to find time with the marketing for the music and my company that's unrelated to music as well so i'm the yeah. person who maybe will release one song every half a year yeah is there is there an ambition for the music long term or or is it you know that you you want to carry on this parallel path etc or or can you become the the you know a, a new breed of of uh musician for the for the future and maybe <laughs> maybe you know at the end of the day i, I talked to a, a number of artists about this a lot that people are finding different ways of actually sort of connecting with audiences and putting their art out there at the moment i mean could, could you be could you be um you know a tedx speaker for example talking about business philosophy and and delivering the music all at, at the same time what 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 would be the ideal stage for you ideal well i think at the moment since since my other job is actually my own company and i can't just leave that like i'm still <laughs> invested and interested in that as well um yeah. i i i do plan to uh i guess sell the company eventually <laughs> hopefully get acquired and um maybe focus on music for a while um i i i don't know cuz like when i think of famous people i don't really aspire to be a famous person that has no privacy i suppose yeah um so yeah. so i hope if i become famous then it's like you said like as a someone who would do a ted talk or someone who would talk about psychology or philosophy like um people listen to what you have to say and what you think but not in an obsessive fan a paparazzi way. kind of way <laughs> yeah yeah no absolutely a, a thought leadership type way in a way or a, you know a, a, a philosopher type way but yeah know, hopefully I, I music I philosopher i haven't seen anyone uh, um one of the artists that i follow has uh released a number of albums as a book so she got a she got a record uh, she, rather than record deal she got a a book deal and she wrote books and then released the album as part of a book so the book oh, was the main that's interesting which is a way of doing it maybe maybe you could produce a a philosophy paper and and you know sell the philosophy paper and the the, the music comes with it that's never been done yeah. you know yeah, maybe. A, i just think that there are ways forward for people who are perhaps 
more multi-dimensional going forward than than necessarily just being seen as a as a musician or just being seen as the businesswoman or just being seen as that yeah you know, i think you could you know genres can mix and when i say genres not just genres of music but genres of sort of business philosophy you know education music and and bringing those things together um a friend of mine yeah. shared a shared a wonderful um, TED talk the other day by a, 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 a guy who's a lecturer, um, but he's also a you know very uh, well known jazz musician, and he was talking about the components of uh, of learning music and, and playing music together, but at the same time playing music and, and then showing bits of music and the overall was a really useful experience for for people to learn from and may, maybe mm. there's there's room to do that <laughs> yeah that that's interesting like it's always interesting when someone connect um a completely different field together and like yeah. you come up with a, a new concept you've never really heard of before so yeah hopefully hopefully <laughs> i can i can do something like that um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I think if anybody can do it, it will be you, um, because oh. you know you you you've obviously got uh, quite a unique talent there in terms of in terms of your music. So thank you so much for joining me and talking to me today. I hope you didn't find that too yeah, painful. Thank you. Um, you know, no, it wasn't uh, as nerve wracking as I thought it would be, because well, I don't go. see anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> No, these things aren't nerve wracking, and you know, we've got to have a fight with our next dance as well. Oh, there yeah, you go, yeah. Sam. My, my go. laptop's Look. on my next stand right now. Oh, her laptop's on the next stand. There we go. Look, there we go. So, um, folks, if if you haven't seen one of these yet, that's a next stand. Um, Tam Lin Tam, thanks for joining me today. Which which one did you want to be known by? By the way, Tam Lin or Tam? Yeah, Tamlin. It's my artist name. Okay, we'll we'll go with that. <laughs> um, thank you for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure, and we'll make sure we put the links in here. In fact, Sam's already done it to your YouTube oh, thank channel. You. So if <laughs> you've been watching you this today, me. you want to learn more. Honest to goodness, when you look at this video this afternoon, um, this this one to win, will you give up? You will be absolutely gobsmacked. So please do check it out. <laughs> And, uh, and you know, if you like it, subscribe, because the next one will be coming out sometime later this year. Tamlin, thanks you very much for joining me. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye.